Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to install the classic cooler, the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, onto a Intel 1150X chipset. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we're going to take a look at how to install the Arctic Freezer 34 onto our Intel 11.5X chipset board. This particular board is the ASUS Z170-E, a slightly older board, about three years old, maybe four years old, and we're actually going to be trying to cool down the monster that is the Intel 6700K, which is uh, something of a thermonuclear warhead. So we're going to put the cooler on, show you how it's all done, and then we'll do some quick testing at the end to see what the temperatures are like. So some of the parts we're going to need to do this, we've got our MX4 thermal compound, which is uh, pretty important, you're going to need some of that. Also from the fittings kit inside the box, we've got the Arctic included retention mechanism, this goes on the back of the motherboard, and if you look very closely at it you'll see that there is an additional hole at the bottom, and also it has the Arctic logo printed on it. That's pretty important because that tells you which orientation it needs to be when you attach it to the rear of the board. Next up we'll be needing our two brackets. These are multi-purpose brackets and are used for both the AMD and also the Intel brackets. So depending on which way you put them around, that's Intel, that's AMD. But we'll show you that in a close-up as we go through it. Also, for installing this cooler, we'll need some standoffs. Now there's a set of three standoffs included in the package. And the ones you want are the ones that are actually, they do have no markings on them at all. No lines or anything actually on the barrel. And also they are threaded the same both ends. So if you try and screw one of the threads into the retention plate, it should screw in quite easily. And also if you unscrew it and then put it back in again, around the other way, you should also find it fits. If it doesn't, then you've got the AMD ones and you've got the wrong ones. So change them for the ones that work with both sides. So first let's start off with the base. So flip over the motherboard, give it a good clean if there's any dirt or debris. If it's a new board, obviously you don't need to do that. And if you look at the bracket, again, you've got the Arctic logo, which is printed on the top, and you've got the extra hole on the bottom. So this just lines up really nicely. And just make sure that all of those are pushed in nice and firmly into the board. And that if you look at a side angle, it's all looking pretty flush. I can see already that side's popped out a little bit. Just make sure that it's all in there nice and firmly. When you flip it around and actually put it onto a hard surface, then you should find that it levels itself out quite nicely anyway. And as a quick visual on the top, just make sure you can see all the threads sticking through. Once you've done this part, you can actually put in the standoffs, which again, there's four standoffs, again, the threads exactly the same each side. And when you screw these in, you will find that the actual back plate will kind of become more flush. Ideally, if you can do to make it fit easily, do it in a crisscross pattern, if at all possible, or opposing sides. And these only need to be hand tight. You don't necessarily need a spanner or a box wrench to actually tighten these up. Hand tight is generally fine. Although if you're slightly concerned that you may, they may come a little bit loose and you wanna make sure they are firmly attached, then you can use a, uh, a box wrench or socket to make sure they're nice and tight. Although, make sure you get the right size first. So we'll settle with just the hand tight because I honestly can't be bothered to get a box wrench. And also it isn't really necessary. These will go in quite tight just by hand. So that is our four mounting pillars done. So now the next thing to do is to start assembling our cooler. Now as it comes out of the box, you'll generally have the fans attached, but you can just remove the spring clips from the cooler and to leave it in the open position. You will need it like this. So you've got access to the screw mounting areas for when you tighten the cooler down. Generally, you'll put the fans on at the very end, which is for me, probably the worst part of the whole situation. Anyway, let's move on. So need to put the brackets on the side. So these are the brackets we use, there's two of them, and there is a mounting area on the side, both sides, and there's a very, very fine slot there, which this actually fits into. So if you look at the actual piece of metal itself, it's got rounded edges, just make sure the rounded edges are face up, rather than being like that. If you've got the brackets with the kind of rolled over edges facing upwards, you've got it around the wrong way, so make sure you put it on the right way. So just gently put the bracket over the top and then with the small threaded screw, you just attach that. You can do it up to start with, just hand tight and then use a screwdriver to tighten it right down. And this is actually quite an important bit. Make sure you do actually 
do this up really firmly because if there's any movement or it's not fully seated, then you will get pretty poor temperatures on your cooler. So make sure that's all in nice. And again, making sure that the dog leg is actually facing outward for the Intel setups. If you're using AMD, then the dog leg goes inward. So now we can move over to the other side. And again, exactly the same process. Just make sure that the bracket actually fits into the little retainer. It should hold itself in place. If it wants to fall off, then it means you've probably got it upside down. So do be careful with that because it really can affect the thermals and also the positioning of the cooler. A couple of turns by hand and then you can get your screwdriver. I generally tend to do that just so that you don't try and accidentally thread the threads. And then once you've got it firmly attached, just give it another tighten down, make sure it's all nice and firmly secured. So when you're finished, you should have something which looks very much like this. With the dog legs on both sides pointing outwards. And if you actually offer it up to the processor, you should find that it fits on relatively easily and should line up. So we know we've got that done right. So now what we need to do is to apply the thermal paste and then we can attach the cooler in its final position. So with this, we're gonna use the Arctic MX4 compound, which is a really good compound to use. Now there is a debate on how this should be done. Arctic themselves actually show this in their own videos so that the heat pipes are actually loaded sideways with heat paste. You can, if you want to, just put a pea-sized blob in the middle of the processor. Again, this bit is entirely up to you, but I'm actually gonna follow the method by Arctic in this particular case to do it exactly as they show. So with the Arctic method, Generally, you actually get a sachet of this in the packet, which actually makes it a little bit easier to apply. So what we want to do is to do a small line, drag down the heat pipe, and do that along all four pipes. And just make sure you've got four relatively good lines on there. Personally, if you, uh, if you feel like it, you can do the four lines and then maybe add a little bit more in the middle if you wanted to. Generally with thermal paste, less is more. So go with that, see how that goes. If you find your temperatures aren't what you expected, you can always remove the cooler and then give it another try. But that is essentially what you should end up with. So now we're to put the cooler on. Now the cooler itself actually has a logo on it that says Arctic. So that should be facing the right way up when you're looking down at it, if the board is running the right way. Also, it will help when mounting the fans because there are actually ledges built into the side of the fin stack to help with the placement of the fans. So let's drop this down over onto the processor. And if we look at it, you should see that it sits flushly on the CPU. Now you can take the thumb screws, which are included. And the thumb screws are universal throughout the range for the AM4 and also for the uh, 11.5x chipset. Now what I generally tend to do with these is to get them so that the screw just meets up with the bar and do that on opposing sides. So that it's all nice and level. So as soon as you start feeling resistance, then you can do it on opposing sides. So I'm gonna do two at once, just a single turn. That one's tight, that one's not so tight. And just do them a little bit at a time and you should find that they all sync up. If you want to, they can just be hand tight, but if you want to, you can go ahead after and use a screwdriver and just give it a very, very small little turn just to make sure that you have got some firm pressure on there. And there we go, so that is the cooler mounted. Now is the fun part, actually putting the fans on. Now for those of you that are regulars to the channel will know that I've often struggled with these fans in the past. Sometimes they clip on straight away, sometimes they don't. Of all the things of the Arctic Freezer 34 range, the spring clips on these are the one thing which I generally, generally would like to see improved. So if you're watching, help, help a brother out. <laughs> So let's start with the front one first of all. So the front fan, just make sure that the cable that comes out of the fan is actually at the bottom. If you try and put it on the sides, that will actually interfere with the spring clip and make life even more difficult and you don't want that. So putting the fan on and if you look at the actual fan itself, 
Generally, you want to have it so it's pretty level. So there's a little bit of an air gap at the top of the fan. We can just about peaks over the top. And then that should line up perfectly with the little indentation in the spring, which should line up with the hole in the fan or the mounting area. So with it held in place, with it roughly in the, in the right position, all you do is push the clip forward. Actually, I'm going to put that up slightly higher. And there we go, there's one in. And then we're just going to flip around onto the other side. Yeah, there we go, not bad, first time. The back one possibly won't be so easy. Obviously, if you're using a Freezer 34, either the CO edition or one of the other versions that only has a single fan, at this point, you're done. But we're gonna go ahead now and put the additional fan on. Again, making sure that our wire, our exit wire, for the PWM signal as is at the bottom. And the rear of the cooler actually has, so there's ridges along each side. So you, you pretty much know roughly where it needs to be. So we're gonna hold that into position. And again, same deal going to flip that spring round and there we go that one's in and then do the same on the other side and there we go excellent first time both of them went in excellent I'm very happy with that so that is our fans installed on the motherboard so all we need to do now is to join up the two PWM sharing technologies on both fans and we can plug the male PWM connector into one of the females on the other fan and then we can plug that into our motherboard header. Now if you're fortunate enough to have a relatively high-end board and you've got a CPU optional header if you want to you can obviously do that plug one into the CPU fan and plug the other one into CPU optional. This will on some boards allow you to have more control and also because of the fans certain amount of amperage which are allowed through the system you may find slightly better performance or maybe slightly higher RPMs but generally, even if you do put them with the PST sharing, there's not a massive draw on these, so you should be absolutely fine on a regular CPU header. So that is the processor fully installed. So all we need to do now is to mock up a little test bench and see what the temperatures are like. Okay, so we're back. It's all fully installed and we've got this very crude rudimentary rig set up on the desk, but it serves a purpose. And the purpose is to test this cooler to make sure it actually does what it's meant to do. Now, for those of you that are listening on headphones, maybe you're picking up the cooling fan at the moment. This is actually currently running the CPU Z stress test on the CPU and the processor is currently running at approximately 70 to 71 degrees. I have also run Cinebench R20 on it and we managed to crank it right up and get around about 85 degrees out of it and I think the paste was still kind of bedding in. But after running the test for a little while, it actually seems to be calming down and is saying around 70 degrees. Our lowest recording temperatures on the package was 26 degrees and individual cores have actually dropped down to as low as 22 degrees, which is the ambient temperature in the room at the moment. Now currently the fans are pretty much at full whack, so the noise you can hear from this is it at full blast, because I'm still running the stress test. So if we stop the stress test, and there we go, we're dropping straight down to around about 30 degrees on the package, just under 30 degrees and all the cores are starting to behave themselves and we're around about 24, 25 degrees, so literally a couple of degrees over ambient, which just goes to show how good a cooler the Arctic Freezer 34 is, especially considering it's relatively inexpensive price. So overall, yeah, very happy. The loudest thing on this particular test bench at the moment is the graphics card, which I can hear clearly over the other fans in the system, but with both those fans running, the VRMs are staying nice and cool to the touch, actually very cool fantastic little setup so if you're planning to do a intel build maybe a slightly older build maybe you've picked up some bargain second hand components or maybe you're looking at doing a brand new 1200 style build then arctic cooling gonna have you covered i'll put some affiliated links in the video description so you can pick these up from amazon etc or if you want to you can go over to arctic's brand new site and buy one directly from them temperatures are pretty much exactly where i expect them to be so pretty much just slightly over ambient under idle conditions and under a full load still doing really really well and pretty much as well as some 240 mil water coolers so there we go this has been the arctic freezer 34 i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reason now too and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching